Dr. DiMatteo just pointed out something that, that one day you will be the ones up here talking. That seems weird. I, I want to show you something that I, I thought to bring today. This is a, a plaque that I got for getting into the National Honor Society in 1992. And it still hangs on my house and it's important to me because what you're in is something that's, that's very special. And um, I'm very like, pleased, as Dr. DiMatteo said, this school is special. The fact that you get a group that's small enough that you know who everybody else is, is not the experience that most American high school children will have. This room could often be four or 500 uh, students who meet the criteria. And the fact that you get to be a part of something so small and special um, at AOSR is something that I do hope you, you take seriously. And so today, uh, I know you're gonna hear from me, Mr. Huber, uh, Ms. Alif, you're gonna hear from business leaders, military leaders, academic leaders, sports leaders. I'm in law enforcement. And so the type of leadership that I've spent 23 years in, uh, we would call paramilitary, which is to say it, it takes a lot of the lessons from the military, but it has some nuances uh, to it as well. You learn a lot from bad leaders and you will have bad leaders. Those are just as important in your own journey as the good ones that you look at. I'm certain that my daughter Mia has said, when I'm a parent, I will never do this thing dad does. <laughs> and I'm certain you've thought that way too. Think the same about leadership. Watch it, observe it, be curious about it. Followership. We talked a lot about leadership, but the best leaders were, best, were good followers. They learned, even when they were probably better than some of the people that they were following, to be obedient, to follow instructions. My best moments as a leader are when I go into my employees and I say, I totally screwed that up. It's counterintuitive. You think that you're exposing a weakness, but in reality, your employees have respect for you because you can acknowledge that you did something wrong and it shows that you're paying attention and you're true to yourself. The ability to be smart with emotional intelligence is probably the key that I have seen work the best. Leadership isn't always easy. I've worked with the, the President of the United States. At any given time, 51% of people love him and 49% of people hate him. That's not always easy. It's one of the things that I have to work on all the time and I think every leader will tell you there are things that I constantly struggle with. But not pleasing people is sometimes a, a position of leadership. And if you find yourself always pleasing people, you are probably not leading somebody in this situation. Leadership is a journey. How many of you are seniors? Okay. Um, I, this is Brian Lambert's pet peeve. I hear people all the time, I'm going to go study this and I'm gonna be this and, or I don't know what I wanna study. I applaud when you say you don't know what you wanna do and I don't want you to know what you wanna do. There are many cultures represented in this room and one of the things that's fascinating to me as a leader coming to Italy is seeing the difference in how different countries leaders show up. I personally am Christian, so I derive a lot of what's important to me about leadership uh, from the example of Christ. And there is a story in the Bible when Jesus is about to be crucified or killed and um, he's having a meal with his friends and he is the leader. He's known as rabbi or teacher. And he pulls out a bucket of water and he starts washing all of these people's feet who've been following him. They're like, absolutely not. You, you will not wash my feet. You are the boss. You are in charge. And, and Jesus, as the leader, says, you can't be a part of me if I can't serve you. And so in our culture, at least in, in the American culture, what often makes people gravitate toward a leader is when folks know that their leader would not ask them to do anything that they would not do. And I had a discussion with my leader and the leader said, I sense that you, you don't like my decision. I was like, sir, I don't, but you are the leader. We march on, we, we do it. And I made certain that the first person to do that job was me. And he said, you don't need to do it. But my troops would never respect me if I hadn't walked in what I'm about to, to ask them to do. Part of leading other leaders is you need to let them fail where it's not going to hurt people. Otherwise, as Ms. Aldridge said, you're missing golden opportunities. 
Leadership also means knowing when not to lead. There will be those moments where you need to let somebody find their own way, but be there to support them along the path. Um, I'm humbled by this crew, and I look forward to hearing what you all have to ask at the end.